Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the Gazelle again. In this video, we want to take a look at the HOT3 anti-tank guided missile. So, let's get started. First of all, we need to hop over into the co-pilot seat. And here, I want to show you the different controls, systems, and indicators necessary to operate the HOT3 in the Gazelle. So, let's get started. In front of us, we have the monitor which will display the image from the camera that's overhead of the co-pilot and uh, the camera image can be used to find the target, acquire the target and engage the target. We will take a look on how that looks in a second. Continuing downwards, we have the mini joystick and the video control box and on the top left here we have the main power button with the off position, the standby position and the power on position. Then next to that, we have the same controls. We have the off position, the standby position, and the on position for the IR system of the camera. Basically, you can use either a normal daylight camera or you can use an IR camera. And the IR camera needs three minutes to cool down and uh, before it can be used. So if you have an operation during the nighttime or you want to use the IR camera during the daytime, make sure you turn on uh, the power and the IR system early enough for the camera to be cooled down um, so you can use it properly. Continuing downwards, we have the camera mode here or how the camera is positioned. The first mode is off, the second mode and the third mode are standby modes. Um, and the, third more, uh, the third mode more or less is a travel mode while the force mode is the mode in which you can move the camera and uh, when you put uh, the system into the force mode or the switch into the force mode uh, the camera will be looking forward and you can operate it by using the mini joystick and in the last mode, in the ASS mode uh, the camera will be looking forward as well however you cannot move it by the joystick it uh, will keep the last target it sees in track or the last image point it sees it will keep itself locked on that and you cannot manipulate it by uh, using the joystick which might be useful if you have a point you want to observe and the helicopter um, flies around that position for example and the camera will always be locking that point and you cannot accidentally move the image by bumping it into the stick for example next to that on the right hand side we have the return camera to forward position and wherever the camera is looking at it will look straight forward again if you flick the switch forward. Down on the left here we have the zoom and we can select between five different zoom levels both in IR and daylight mode. And down here uh, this push button is uh, switching between IR and daylight mode. VDO is the daylight mode and v VTH is the IR mode. Continuing over to the left hand side we have the wall mounted side stick and um, starting on the top left of the stick we have the laser button which is under the laser cover to operate it you have to move the cover out of the way and uh, once you press the button the laser will run for a couple of seconds allowing you to range the target the maximum range on the laser is uh, 15 kilometers next to that we have uh, a four-way head switch which only uh, does something in by pushing it left and right up and down is not uh, implemented or not using any or not doing any not any function related to that so you can only move it left and right and by moving it left and right you can uh, adjust the camera gain and the gain level be displayed on the screen in uh, the IR mode and next to that we have uh, another head switch and this head switch allows us to adjust the images bright uh, the image brightness as well as the brightness of the uh, overlay or of the uh, target reticle and stuff like that. And you can also adjust the monitor brightness by moving this brightness lever down here and the monitor's contrast by turning this lever over here or this uh, knob over here. Continuing onwards with the side stick here we have the weapon release button under a cover again you have to open the cover before you can operate it. And then down here we have two more quite important switches. The upper one will uh, re revert or reverse the images, um, uh, sorry, the target uh, crosshairs um, polarity, so you can change between a black crosshair and a white crosshair 
and below that you can uh, change the image uh, color or you can reverse the image uh, from white hot to black hot and vice versa and this applies uh, for the IR mode and then down here below uh, the image or the screen we have the key that allows us to enable the weapons and to fire them let me zoom in a bit and on the left you have two test modes uh, that can be used for testing and to the right you have the day operating mode and the night operating mode set uh, whatever is appropriate for your current flying situation obviously and then next to that we have the weapon selector switch where you can scroll uh, through the different weapons starting with weapon pilot 1 which is the left outmost pilot continuing to weapon pilot 2 which is the right outmost pilot 3 the left inmost and 4 the right inmost and in between those uh, positions is always uh, a safety position marked with zero and whenever you um, move from one position to the next uh, or from uh, 1 to 0 or from 2 to 0 the wire the missile uses for guidance will be cut so you can only have one missile at in the air at uh, any given time um, ex except if you lose a missile obviously for example if the missile goes dump for some reason uh, you can cut the wire and fire another missile and just keep in mind that you have um, only four missiles and um, during normal loadout um, there only would be two missiles loaded because the missiles are quite heavy and uh, you have to trade in the missiles against fuel and uh, also to keep in mind the HOT3 anti-tank guided missile is a wire guided missile so the maximum range is given by the wire length and the wire length is 4300 meters so you cannot engage any target above that you will not be cleared by the fire control computer and uh, there is no point in trying to engage above that range because the missile will just fly dump into the ground once uh, the wire uh, is torn off because the uh, target is outside range and uh, yeah that concludes the basic overview of the system and I will now continue to turn it on you can normally do this in the flight but uh, just for this tutorial make it a bit easier let's turn it on here on the ground so first things first we will turn on the monitor then we will enable the system power then we will enable the IR cooldown or the IR system allowing it to cool down and then we will put the camera into the travel mode and just to show you how it looks right now we can turn it on and as you can see when we turn into the forward position and operating mode the camera turned around from the back and is now looking forward and right now we already could use the system um, in the daylight operating mode because uh, the daylight camera is not requiring to cool down and just if we switch to the IR mode you can see the image is quite grey you can only make out some shapes because the camera is cooling down and um, the further the camera cools down the better the image quality will get and you can already see the image quality, uh, quality is improving and just how to show you how it looks uh, pressing this button down here will uh, uh, reverse the image polarity from white hot to black hot and vice versa and the button above that will change the um, crosshairs polarity and yeah the rest we will talk about once we reach into the target area so let the so let's let the system warm up and we will put it into the travel mode where the camera is facing backwards so it's protected from any debris hitting the aircraft i hope that won't happen in this flight anyways but yeah better be sure okay now enough is the talking at this point so let me take off and fly towards the target area and I will put a mission uh, file into the download or into the description of the video and if you want to try it out yourself I, has, I have set the waypoint for you and the target is at 7.7 .7 kilometers distance uh, basically towards the north and I will just take off and fly towards that target position and uh, we will talk to you again once we are there Okay, now we're getting within engagement range, so let me slow down the helicopter and then enable the auto hover. And uh, as of right now, to move the image or to move the target point or to move the crosshair better, uh, you have to be in auto hover because um, the camera movement will use your normal joystick and that is only available 
Um, this function is only available when you're out to hover. However, I think you can also assign uh, buttons to the small joystick instead of using the normal or your normal hardware joystick. So if you wish to do that, you can do so. Okay, now let me slow down the helicopter a bit further. And we have to be below 20 kilometers per hour and at uh, pretty much a uh, level flight without any descent or climb. And now enable the auto hover. And yeah, there we go. The helicopter is now, uh, now stabilized by the computer, which is nice. So let me hop over to the co-pilot side. And I will put the camera into the normal operating mode or forward-looking mode, as you can see right now. And as you can see, the image is quite bright. So uh, let me turn down the camera again. No, not doing it. I'm oh, sorry. I'm uh, doing it in the wrong direction, obviously. That's uh, not helping, so perfect. Okay, as you can see, if you look on the uh, screen, uh, the number 4 down here uh, shows the current gain level. So you know where you're at. And up here, we have the heading of the helicopter. So currently, our helicopter is heading towards 12 degrees. And below that, we have the camera's uh, heading. Uh, left or right, for example, if I move the camera to the left, our heading is now 350, which means 10 degrees to the left. And if I move it to the right, it's now 10, showing us the camera being 10 degrees to the right. Okay, that's good. Now, let's try to find our target. Uh, we will be, yeah, we will be in night vision mode, I guess. And uh, we will zoom in a bit on the camera. I have mapped that to the joystick. And now let's scout out for our target. It should be more or less to the north. Let's see if we can find it. Oh yeah, here are the targets, hidden behind the trees. Okay, yeah. Trees not helping out uh, in our favor. But uh, let's uh, lock onto the right hand target, or move the crosshairs onto the right target. Because that provides uh, quite a good target point. Let me also change the, uh, the crosshairs popularity. Yes. I'm not sure if it's better or not. I can do black cock. Black, uh, white hot, black hot, whatever you want. Okay, this should be fine, I guess. So, now let's select the missile. We're selecting the day firing mode. We want to fire missile number one first. And uh, last but not least, we have to enable the master arm. And now we can uh, use the laser to range our target. And up here on the left, we get a range of 3,956 meters which is within our 4,300 uh, uh, 4, meters engagement range. So now the only thing left to do is to align the helicopter with the target because the missile can be only fired 3 degrees to the left or 3 degrees to the right of the helicopter. And currently the target is 5 degrees to the left of the helicopter. So I will hit my uh, key combination, which uh, will uh, turn the autopilot towards the target. And this will take a second and the helicopter will turn very slowly towards the target. As you can see now, the target is only three degrees to the left, and we get the white uh, bracket down here, or the white square down here, meaning that we are cleared to engage by the computer. So now the only thing to left to do is to open the cover and hit the weapon release button. By default, that would be the space button. I have it mapped to my joystick, and I guess you would want to do that as well. So let me release the weapon. There it goes. And if you zoom in on the image, we can see the missile flying down there. And it will take a couple of seconds to reach a target. Perfect, we got a hit there. And now let's slew over to the next target, which is hidden behind the trees, but it will move. Which will give us a better shot, which is very, very nice of him. And we can move to the second missile now, which will cut the cable for the first missile and will allow us to engage the second missile. Okay, the target is in the open now. We got the white bracket. We are clear to engage. So let me hit my weapon release. And there the missile goes. Let's zoom in out a bit. And we should have impact any moment now. Sorry for the vibration. And there we go. Target has been hit. And if I see that correctly, it has been destroyed. And um, obviously the camera system can be used for reconnaissance as well. Uh, this was quite an important role during a couple of uh, conflicts the French helicopters were used in. And um, yeah, 
it can be used during day and night and um, I guess this video hopefully showed you how to operate it thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions leave them down in the comments and uh, yeah thank you very much and fly safe